Alright, I cut in right here off of Rosa Parks. Just head south for the chill ride down to Union Station. Here I get to the Overlook Twirlies, as I call them, which is a roundabout up over over Lake, Overlook, and then a loop down on the other side, which then you cut left, go over toward Interstate Avenue, and cross over there. And then head down over to Williams, where Whole Foods is, because before I get on the train, I want to get something to eat before I sit there and chill and work on things and do whatever I do on the train for the next five hours. So, up and over, and a little traffic here on the overpass. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta slow down and be cool when there's traffic. So, but they spot me and merge right. So I cut over and go around. But still, slow and easy. I don't want to bop a kid. And so far, I gotta say, this being the second day that I have Orange PDX, the bike is riding crazy smooth. It also just occurred to me, as I'm riding Orange PDX too, around this time, that it's a space horse just like my other one. And then I get right here and, oh, memories. There's the third floor where I used to live. Uh, it's about a thousand square foot of hacker space. Lived there for a couple years. It's great having a Mac stop right, right downstairs. Anyway, a little later, I get to Whole Foods, so sit down and have some thoughts. So there's the bike, there's the whole bowl. And this is one of my favorites here in Portland. It's tasty stuff. Uh, sour cream, avocado, cilantro, cheese, beans, rice, some tasty stuff, and special sauce. I love this stuff. And for you uh, concerned citizens about pandemic stuff, you usually, if you come in here like I do, after hours, like it's three o'clock right now, you can mask up and get in and out in like less than five minutes and there's nobody in there waiting so it's only lunch time where it's gonna be busy but my whole life revolves around when I'm out and about like us doing thing and out doing things in hours that everybody else does not do them in thus I do not wait in line I get things done a lot faster and all that good jazz and even though it's a veggie thing, it tastes pretty meaty between the beans and the sauce and stuff. Got a good kick. So even if you're like me and you eat meat, this is a good meal. Like it gets you going, it keeps you going for the rest of the day. Especially like me for eating at three o'clock in the afternoon. Another myrrh item. It's good stuff. Now, of course, mind you, the juxtaposition is this is forged aluminum and such, or you know, other other steels that they seem to use. Um, which is generally speaking, it's bad for the environment. But the idea is that you make it once and then you don't use it anymore. I don't think they intend to just make one item for like everybody and then be done with it though. Which is inherently part of the problem. They'll continue to make these. People will continue to buy them. So the question is, is they are they that good for the environment? It's a big question. Probably not. Some type of weird futuristic paper bag of liquids would probably be better for the environment. <laughs> all right unlocking time to get going got to get down to the station don't want to miss a train i mean you know amtrak's late a lot but at the departure points they're always on time so heading down here as you can see from the map head down and then i kind of cut on to broadway and i'll give you a little tip about that and then i do a loop to loop to get down to Union Station. Especially these days, it's a little it's a little weird out front, so I like to kind of loop around. So what I do is I just 
head south again, directly south. And right here, there's a, a zigzag shot you got to take. So turn right. You know, you can go right on red. So you can cut over, but you got to watch merging traffic, which I do. And there's a car that zips by. And then I can cut over there and get in the left lane and get around. So this puts me over here on this side street that's not as busy as the other one. Um, but it is just a little side street, like a greenway. And it gets you over the interstate no stoppages, no stop signs, no distractions along the way. And it gets you down here so that you can make a right and not go across the traffic that's coming off the interstate, which is always just feels a little deathly, if you know what I mean. So you get down here and you can kind of slip into the right hand turn lane and then just go, you know, Oklahoma roll stop, whatever it's called, and then cut right on to Broadway here head down toward the Broadway Bridge, which you see right there. And then the final little tip I'll give you in just a second here. All right, rolling up on the Broadway Bridge here. This is, I, I like this bridge. Um, pretty cool streetcar runs across that they added that back in the I don't know, about a decade or so ago and makes for the whole streetcar loop other than that there's nothing super significant about the bridge except that it runs over here and then drops you down to the, the train station now you can go left but you'd have to wait for the light most of the time so I like to go right and also I get to avoid all of the traffic out front and all the people just kind of hanging out and stuff out in front of the station across the street where there's some shady stuff going on these days but anyway you cut right you come down the bridge here and then you cut another right right here and there's kind of two ways you can do this you can go hard right and go up on the sidewalk there and go under the bridge which is a little faster but I actually stayed in the road this time for whatever stupid reason and decided to loop around and th this is completely legitimate too you can go this way and then cut right right here and then right again. Down the back way. You go under the Broadway Bridge, which you'll see here in just a second. Broadway Bridge. And you just cut in right here to the left. You're kind of opposing and traffic and stuff because it's one way through the station. But since you're on a bike, you know, you could just pop over on the sidewalk or just walk it over underneath the awning of the station. But since there's not a lot of traffic, I just kind of cruise over here. It's not a big deal. And then cut in like so. As soon as I find a ramp up, and oh, there it is the over way. there. So let's go over there roll up dismount right here and then I just walk the bike into the station here we are Portland Union Station ready to go All right, I arrived at the station and the first thing I needed to do was get the bike broken down appropriately to be able to box it in an Amtrak box like it I think they're 15 bucks usually 10 or 15 bucks really cheap usually if you just buy a box in the aftermarket it, they might be upwards of $50 so if you buy it directly from Amtrak it's it's a steal anyway uh, what you need to do once you get the bike box is loosen the handlebars so that you can turn the handlebars so that they align with your frame and you'll see this again in just a second but also so that you can take the pedals, as you can see one of my orange pedals right there on the oh. counter, you can take the pedals off of the bike too. Because what you'll need to do is streamline it, just like this as you see, and then just slide it into the box. Let's see here. Now, you don't have to do this on all of the Amtrak lines. It's very few of them that you do have to do this on. 
this particular segment of the Coast Starlight, you do because of various reasons, which I might elaborate on later. But anyway, once you get it in the box, then I just put my Allen wrenches, which I brought. They don't give you the tools. That's important note. You need to be able to have the tools to get your bike all set up to get into the box yourself. So anyway, put those away. Just two simple tools for that particular bike. The bike box is back there. It's ready to go. So I wave farewell and head over to the first class lounge because, as always, I'm in the sleeper. The main waiting room in Portland, which I'm walking through right now, it is nice. It's real nice. But the bathrooms are shady, and, you know, if you can wait in the first class lounge, like if you buy business class or something, it's ideal, as you can see. Hello, excellent. How are you doing? All right. Where are you going today? I'm going to Pasco. All right. And that will be Adrian. Adrian, what That's you me. train at 420? Sweet. That's, uh, your uh, number and your car number. that's a I'll good boarding time. When we're ready. Okay. There's coffee and tea right around the corner. Welcome to that. Awesome. Thank you. So, you know, there's always the coffee and tea that they have. They have other beverages, especially, you know, in any of the first class lounges. There's only a few of these throughout the country, like New York, I believe DC, Chicago, and Portland. And there's one other one. Oh, Los Angeles. Those are the only ones in the entire United States. So if you get a chance to wait in the lounge, it's it's pretty ideal. They're very laid back. All of them are renovated and have nice new furniture. It's very comfortable. Several of them have places where you can plug up your cell phone or your laptop and do work if you need to do that. They're really nice, you know. And this is just a little extended area onto the station here in Portland. And as you can see, the tall back chairs, so you can go back there and get a little privacy if you want to talk on your cell phone or make some calls or do work or whatever. And then, you know, the refrigerator, there's the tea and coffee machine. It's just the push button type. None of the, none of the, you know, third generation high quality stuff. Uh, but you know, it makes do when, you know, you want to have a little sip of something while you're waiting for the train. And also I got to add, look how yet the bathroom is clean in the first class lounge In all of the Amtrak lounges. If you're in the first class lounge, you get access to clean bathrooms. It's great. All right, time to board. That was the shiny new engine with the new paint scheme and the decades and decades old Superliner cars, which are still perfectly fine, really, from a ridership perspective, or a rider's perspective. Up above, if you're curious, that's a pedestrian bridge that crosses from the front of Union Station over to the yards over there where there's some apartments and such. As always, I am greeted by a friendly car. Adrian Hall. Which room do you have? Room three? Yeah. Okay. Uh, to your left, upstairs to your right. Thank you. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, up, up, and away I go to my room. Again, I've got a roomette this time. So I just swing over here and to plunk. Door shut. Boom, got my privacy, and I am all set and ready. It's in the box, oh. waiting for the box. <laughs> He's got an orange cart, it's like hanging out the end. Where, where is it? It's just in here, baggage claim? Yeah, you'll collect it in here. Okay. Yeah, no worries. 